What's up guys, it's Jake here from Cheap Live Gaming. Today, another tutorial for you guys. Today, I want to look at skin tones, a popular subject and something that I think a lot of people struggle with. So what I want to do is start off this little uh, idea with a very basic way to approach skin tones because there are a lot of different approaches and uh, a lot of different color theory involved into making a really nice realistic skin tone and uh, there are people that can pull off some incredibly nice effects but these techniques are pretty advanced and not really uh, accessible to a lot of beginning miniature painters or intermediate painters um, out there you know, you may struggle with these super advanced sort of using things like green and blue under your skin tones to really give you that nice realistic shade. Uh, a lot of us aren't going to want to spend the, the time layering in tens and tens and tens of layers over the top of our, our little face here for something like a Space Marine or, or in this example, a uh, Custodes Shield Captain. So we're going to take a more basic approach start with something that I might use for a level one or tabletop standard paint job, something that looks okay, that's very quick, and that is easy to do. So, that's today's video. If you guys do have requests for more advanced techniques, we can start looking a little bit deeper into the skin tone realm of things. Feel free to drop those comments down below. Leave suggestions, other tips you may have for viewers. Make sure to read the comment section below to pick up other things that viewers will leave for you guys, little tidbits that I may have forgotten or left out. So, um, I'm going to use a couple different sort of brands here for this paint scheme. Uh, a lot of people have access to Citadel, so we're going to go into the Citadel thing, and we're going to pull from Vallejo for our base skin tone. So this is model color 70. 928 light flesh it's uh just a nice neutral skin tone uh it's it's on the lighter side of things as you may imagine with a title like light flesh this is their basic skin tone color you can see the sort of the side by side here how we're using light flesh here so we're starting a little bit more on the light side the reason for that is because we're going to come in with a lot of shades and washes by citadel to give us that defined sort of uh contrast that we're looking for on the skin tone instead of starting darker and brightening from there we're going to kind of start with our mid our mid tone that uh is going to be our, our sort of jumping off point so i've just base coated this little guy here with model color light flesh basic stuff multiple thin coats don't glob it on too much i think this took me three coats to get this sort of acceptable level of base coat you can see uh, if you look if you can notice here there's a little bit of that uh, black showing through underneath but that's okay we just want a nice base to start off with this isn't perfect and again this is going to be something that's quick and easy so base coat you know you can use uh, whatever tone you like really whatever flesh tone that you have in your sort of arsenal we're gonna start there what we're gonna do is use Citadel's Reichland Flesh Shade to darken this down. Reichland Flesh Shade is fantastic. Uh, if you look at it in the pot here, let's give it a little shake, get some in the little lip here. You can see that it's sort of, uh, let's get this guy out of the way, brown, red, it's got red tones in it, which is fantastic for giving our shade, our, um, our skin tone, a realistic shade and not have it be that sort of witch or undead sort of look, the bringing in something like a red tone will give us a more believable and realistic shade to everything. Uh, another thing you could use is something like Seraphim Sepia, which is more on the brown side of things, just depending on the, the type of skin tone you're doing. Uh, but I would definitely recommend you go with the Flesh Shade. There are a lot of different brands out there that you can use. Citadel I thought was just the most uh, widely used for somebody that might be watching a tutorial like this. So what we're going to do is use this wash to kind of do the majority of our work for us. 
we don't want to spend a lot of time layering and highlighting to get those really nice sort of layers and effects. So we're going to let the wash do the work for us. So let's just apply that here. I'm going to get a little bit of water into my brush here. I'm kind of at a weird angle here, so I might be kind of shaky. We'll try to avoid that. You can see it just, just moisten my brush, get most of the water off. We're going to come in for some shade. And you don't want to overload this, but you do want to apply it uh, a decent amount. So we're just going to kind of work in here, letting the shade do its work for us again. Everything wants to kind of settle in those recesses, pick out our skin tone. You can start off applying it a little more heavily than you might normally and come back in with your, your uh, dry brush and wick some of that away. So you can see here. You just kind of want to push the wash around, get it into those crevices, and then get rid of that excess. As you see, I've got a little bit of excess there. Kind of just get that out of there and go from there. So we do want it to be pretty heavy in some areas. So we really want to define this where where he's got this sort of uh, armor built around his his head here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the shade down and sort of let it collect in some areas and sort of wick it away from others, giving that sort of look that I'm after. Maybe the top of his head will have a little dark spot here, somewhere in there, just to give it some interest. We're not gonna think too hard about this. So something like that. Don't worry too much about the actual face part of it. This is more to build some, some sort of different levels of color throughout the rest of the area. So something like that. Just real basic stuff. And you can see already we're getting a really nice really nice look to our face here. And you can see it, it does of course with that red tone you can really start to see that pull through there and give us a more realistic look. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to give it a good 15 or 20 minutes. If you have a, a mini fan or something that you can put it in front of even better. Uh, but don't put it on high in front of a fan and blow the wash around. Sometimes you can do that and you will lose the effect that you've sort of created by letting your wash pool in some areas. So I would just let it dry naturally, be patient, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. So here we are, the wash has dried about uh, 20 minutes or so. So you can see that as the wash dries, the effect becomes more subtle. When it's wet, sometimes it's a little scary, and you're looking at it like, oh no, this is not gonna look, this is not gonna look good. Uh, but don't worry, just give it some time. You can always repaint it, guys, don't freak out. Uh, but you can see here, things like the cheekbones, the eye sockets have really been picked out and given some, uh, some detail and some contrast. The contours of the face are really starting to show now, even from a distance, we don't have to get up close to see sort of the different angles and contours of the face. Like in this ear, you can really see that's very prominent. As we move around, come through the sides, you can see the cheekbones are picked out, the mouth, everything's looking pretty good. Now, I would say that it doesn't ever hurt to do another layer at this point. So it doesn't need it, but if you really want to start to pick out some some areas, like if you really want some deep set cheekbones or something like that, maybe you want to get in the temple and, and really make that pronounced, um, you can add more layers of this flesh shade at this stage if you'd like, but it is definitely not necessary. And I'm going to show you guys that. I'm not going to do another layer just for the purpose of this tutorial to show you that you can do it in very few steps. And of course, whether or not you need this is just kind of a personal taste uh, sort of thing. And will depend on how heavily you applied the wash in the first step that we did here. So just kind of, kind of look at it and think about what you want your final result to be and kind of just make a decision based on that. So now the next thing we want to do is bring some of those areas that we had back up to our original skin tone, which is of course our light, our light flesh. So if we put this next to it here, you can see that the shade does settle in the recesses, but it also will tint the high areas 
of our skin tone just a little bit. So a way that we can uh, use that to our advantage is to brighten up some of the very highest areas again back to our original skin tone. So a very easy way to do that would be with dry brushing. I'm going to do it with a an actual smaller brush so you guys can see exactly where I'm putting the paint. But a lot of times I'll just go for dry brushing with this because it's so fast and it will do the job just as well. So I'm using this this brush here. This is a uh, 8404 Raphael brush 30 size. So whatever you're comfortable with, something like this is fine too. Uh, if you can get a nice point on it and you're confident coming in there. So we've got the basic skin tone on our palette here. We're going to load up our brush. We don't want to overload it, something like that. And we're going to come in, if I can get the angle right, we're going to hit certain areas like the cheekbones. You can see that here. If I can do this at an angle, the eyebrows, the bridge of the nose, the uh, the top of the ears, just places that we want to be a little brighter. And this is going to look pretty stark at first, don't worry. We're going to fix that in a second. You might think it looks a little funny. So we're picking out some areas that we want to be a little brighter, kind of top of the head. Again, it's okay to not blend this crazy, a crazy amount, because we're going to do that in the next steps. So the top of the head will be brighter. And this is going to kind of base, base this off of what you did in step one, where you see dark areas, paint them lighter around it to kind of reinforce that darkness, that area of darkness around them. So something like that, very, very quick, very simply, we're just going to kind of work our way around the model and give ourselves some, some basic highlights. If you're not comfortable doing it the same way I did, dry brushing is perfectly acceptable. And in some cases will even work better. So hopefully you guys can see that okay. This is a, a kind of a weird light lighting setup for this color. So hopefully it's not too washed out at this point. So. This doesn't need a ton of time to dry. We'll probably just sit here on camera while it dries. And then what we're going to do is come in with another layer of the same shade one more time. So we've got our Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to go with a bigger brush this time just so I can go quickly. And we're just going to come right in there all over again and this is going to help blend down that starkness and that sort of intensity that we created with that aggressive sort of highlight we didn't have very pretty blends it was very uh you could definitely see like on the top of his head where i left off with that base color again but when we put this wash on it's going to blend everything back down we're going to kind of get three levels of highlight here because we'll have our original tone which we already darkened with the flesh shade and then we're going to have the brighter level because we just reapplied it. We're going to darken that again. We're going to kind of get different levels of this skin tone with only one color. So it's subtle, but it does make a little bit of a difference. So same thing. We're going to let this dry 15, 20 minutes, and I'll be back to you guys in just a second. Here we are again, the wash has dried our second layer, and you can see here, I tried to zoom in a little more to give you guys a closer look. It is quite subtle, as I mentioned before, but there should be a very slight difference in our skin tones. You can see, if you take a look at the top of his head, it does brighten up, and you don't see that stark line as much because the wash blended it down. This side of his face I didn't highlight as much so you could see kind of more subtly. But there is uh, sort of another level of detail to his face, but it doesn't look too overbearing or too obvious. Now, the most simple way to sort of add more detail to a face is to literally repeat this last thing we did over and over again. So come back with your base tone, 
reapply some highlights on the high areas. Just do it slightly less this time. Wash those areas down a little. Do it again. Keep going. And you will get more and more um, of a detail level each time you do that. So that's something you consider. Another thing you can do is jump up your sort of go in more aggressively with your uh, with your um, highlight layer I should say so instead of using your main your base skin tone when you come in with your brush jump up on another level even brighter than your base color so instead of something like your light flesh tone here you could come in with something crazy like an off-white and just thin it out pretty far and almost do it like a glaze layer and just use it very sparingly and then come in with your flesh shade over that experiment with it again this is something that everybody kind of gets in their own little rhythm for flesh tones I find and has their own sort of process so just play around with maybe those are just a few ideas for you guys again this video I really want to show you guys that it doesn't take a ton of steps so this is really only what three steps now that we're on we we okay so base coat step one wash with Reichland flesh shade for step two we highlighted with our, our original color step three and then we washed it again for step four so four steps so far now there's another thing that I really like to do uh, for flesh tones and really we're pretty much done and that is come in with a black wash so many use the dolls of gnome oil and this is something that can make your face look kind of weird if you're not careful uh, it can get your face to look dirty which sometimes you want it can get your sort of five o'clock shadow look around your your minis for their beard if you want to do that uh, but really what I like to do is accentuate the eye sockets and mouth more so that it's more easy to sort of see because right now it looks fine but this you'll see what I mean when I do it um, so let's just go in here very little on our brush and we're gonna come into the eye socket and the mouth area sort of hit that up in there give ourselves that level and if if we apply too much I've got just water on this brush here. I'm gonna come in and wick that away. And you can see that I can pull that off the areas that I don't want it. It's important that your layer underneath this is dry before you start doing this so that you don't pull off what paint that you're not intending to. So I'll just use, I'll use a lot over here so you guys can see exactly what I mean. So here, let's do this. So say I, I kind of pull too much down like that, and I don't really like that there. We've got our water. We just come through, say no, no thank you to the black, and move on. So by doing this, it can give you a sort of back to that undead look, or back to that sort of uh, witch or, or ghoul sort of look to things. It's, it removes some of the realism to things, but it really helps to define the areas that you want to. So we got the black in there, and we're gonna let that dry. And then what we can do is come in with our flesh shade again, if we don't like how black that is, and put a layer over that to help blend it back down. And you can see how that would be used to do a five o'clock shadow sort of growth of a, a beard growth around the chin and helps to kind of just if you want your your face to look sort of dirty or that kind of thing hopefully we've we've got focus here let's let's force the the focus here come on camera i think that should be in focus for you guys again kind of a learning process for me here on this this camera setup so you guys are gonna have to bear with me over the next few tutorials so at this point five steps we talked about them 
we're pretty much done, right? This skin tone is is fine. It's nothing to get you into a painting competition or Golden Demon, but it looks good. It looks good from far away, which is important for something like a tabletop standard. You want to be able to see the detail from far away, so you have to kind of go more aggressive with your highlights. And it looks okay up close too. So from this point you can come in and, and do something like paint your eyes, paint teeth and the tongue if you'd like to, any other details, paint some scars or or maybe uh, do some other effects to this face. But for the most part we are ready to go. Pretty easy skin tone effect. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Let me know what you think of this basic skin tone down in the comments below. If you want me to expand on this, show you guys anything more, please leave that in the comments below. Any other tips, of course, as always, for other viewers, leave those there as well. I want to thank you guys very much for watching, point you over to my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that social media linked down in the description of this video below. I'm also trying to suggest Patreon to more of my viewers. Patreon allows me to accept pledges to sort of increase my tutorial count, allowing me to spend more time making the tutorials you guys want to see, when you want to see them, and spend less time trying to make money through commission work to support myself. So if you're interested, that is also linked in the description. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you have a great day. Bye now.